Tia Galaj is the CMO of Remote Skills Academy Indonesia, a non-profit education platform that aims to empower the next generation to reskill or upskill with in-demand remote skills such as virtual assistants, digital marketing, and more, enabling them to live life on their own terms. She is also the co-founder and co-managing director of Girls in Tech Indonesia, aiming to inspire the geek in every girl. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Lia and I'm the CMO of Remote Skills Academy, also co-founder and co-managing director of Girls in Tech Indonesia. So today I'm going to share you my experience of running Remote Skills Academy for three years and also Girls in Tech Indonesia for 13 years. What I discovered that despite the advancement of technology and also AI that we have seen in the past year, women still make up of only 27% uh, of a tech workforce in Indonesia and also only hold a 12% of uh, executive positions. So this digital gap uh, not only limits women's potential, but also limits economic growth. So today I want to share how we can bridge this gap and drive economic growth uh, by uh, sharing our experience in running programs and activities. And also I'll introduce you to her plus framework, which hopefully will show you how we all can contribute to create a more inclusive and thriving uh, tech ecosystem. A little bit of background about me. I'm a four-time tech startup founder. I'm also an author of 33 books. Um, and I'm from Bali, uh, but right now I'm based in Brisbane. So if you're in Brisbane, please get in touch. I'm on LinkedIn. You can look at uh, Leah Golich. So to understand the journey of a woman in tech, I would like to begin with my own story as one of the persona of uh, women uh, in technology in my country. So this is me when I was uh, five, six years, years old. As you can see in the picture, I love reading and writing. And uh, when I was 13 years old, my dad bought me a laptop and internet connection. And that was like maybe 97. And that was when internet is, was very new. I was curious, I was excited. And uh, having that tools and facilities really helped me to learn uh, how to create my own websites and uh, even start my own web agency when I was in high school. But uh, coming back from, you know, like when I was a child and I love reading and writing, I really wanna study language and become a writer. But uh, in my country, basically in Indonesia, um, there's not a lot of successful writers can, that can make a lot of money, right? So my parents would say, advise me, just learn, just go to university and learn IT. So that's what I did. I learned IT and um, I become one of the 10% of women in my class. And uh, when I was in university, I, of course, met a lot of uh, friends who, who then we work on uni projects together. Um, and I eventually work as a web developer. And when I was uh, working as a web developer, I was one out of two women in the, in the team, in the company. So my, my boss at that time, my leader at that time can, uh, can really see that I was really uh, not confident in my skill. So that's when he started to mentor me to be more confident. When I was working uh, in tech, I just discovered several problems in my, my passion, basically, right? So my passion for books, my passion for writings, I, I found out that it's difficult to shop online uh, for books in my country at that time. And then um, my book was rejected by the publisher. So I also discover how difficult um, it is to be published in Indonesia. Um, writers also find it difficult to actually write and finish their book, then monetize it, right? Um, in Indonesia also, I mentioned you cannot make a decent living working as a full-time writer. So I find all these problems and I try to solve it with technology. Um, I, I start my own startups. Uh, the first one is online bookstore in 2006. And then nulisbuku.com is uh, the first online print on demand platform. 
in 2010 and in uh, 2016 I start Storyel.co. It's a digital storytelling platform that allows people to write per chapter and monetize per chapter. So the impact we have over 700,000 members, 60,000 books written, and top writers making six figure figures. Um, so at that time, I have received support in infrastructure and facilities from my parents. Uh, I get inspired by, uh, by my exposure to tech tools uh, to create a solution. I get support circle from other female entrepreneurs in tech. Um, I got IT education for sure from the university. Opportunities to work on real project in diverse team when I was in university as well. And uh, mentoring by the leader in my company. And this is all uh, that helps me to create a solution or product with technology, technology to serve community and I can show up and become like a role model for young women in my country, um, create policy that promote uh, diversity in my own company, hire more women in tech, and um, try to inspire and start a, a movement with girls in tech Indonesia. So the question is, if the impact was so good and great to the society, why there's not more women in tech in Indonesia? So the data shows that we need to do better. I already mentioned a little bit that women make up only 27% of workforce uh, in tech industry in Indonesia. And in terms of leadership, we only hold 12% uh, of executive positions. Uh, the percentage of women uh, in STEM graduates in higher education is only 32%. And 50% of women are less uh, least attracted to work in the STEM field because of men's domination. And also, I remember when I was in university, I, I told you guys that I was the 10% of the class. And from that 10%, only 10% that, that really actually go to the tech industry, work in uh, tech industry. So why? So this is some of uh, the possible key factors, right? The first one is access in infrastructure. In Indonesia, uh, we are a big country. We are a country uh, with 17,000 islands and um, yeah, 280 millions of people. So yeah, in, indeed. So we have only like several big cities with, with strong infrastructure. So this is like um, a really big topic now on how do we, uh, we give, provide uh, access infra and, and infrastructure, especially internet connection uh, to, to more uh, places in Indonesia. And then, of course, uh, after that, the, the digital literacy and uh, skills training are needed, uh, especially for women. And also there's a socio-cultural norms and gender stereotypes where women supposed to be, uh, supposed to be at home uh, rather than pursuing technology-related training or work. And also because of the lack of role models in leadership, also this uh, factor is also contributing to the gender biases and discrimination in the sector as well. Uh, and of course, these disparities contribute to broader economic challenges. Um, we uh, right now need to reduce uh, uh, the economic growth and productivity because of that, that gender gap. And we have a uh, talent and innovation gaps. Indonesia uh, right now has a shortage of a 9 million skilled uh, IT workers. Um, and because over 50% of Indonesia's uh, uh, micro SMEs are owned and managed by women, if we don't uh, bridge this gap, this is definitely... Um, you know, like uh, this is if we can we can uh, bridge the gap, uh, we can. Uh, this is also a big chance of uh, increasing the online business opportunities uh, in Indonesia. From my own observations, uh, this is some of my my own personal observations while running Remote Skills Academy and also Girls in Tech. 
the first one, there's a gender bias expectation. I already mentioned in the beginning of uh, how women uh, should uh, take the role and responsibilities at home. And then the second is the lack of access to tech education and training opportunity that is female friendly. I can also show you later uh, what is female friendly looks like. And also some subconscious bias in hiring processes for tech jobs. Um, and um, the last part I discovered just by meeting uh, hun hundreds of girls that they have a lack of self-confidence in their ability uh, in their ability to learn tech or their own tech skills. So the question is how to make a uh, learning technology more fun and enjoyable for women and how to inspire them to participate more in tech how to address the mindset beyond just hard skills and how to help them to be more confident and and thrive in tech uh the experiment i i call this uh her so we need a holistic uh, approach to for digital education for women the first yes we still need the hard skills training and it should be practical and um, it should be it should be fun and also it should show like what's the result that technology can do you need to inspire women uh, with that right and then uh, after hard skills training uh, we need to elevate with soft skills as well which um, foster leadership communication uh, problem solving abilities and and help them to use technology more um, uh, to to give solutions in daily lives and also the last part is uh, role models and inspiration uh, implement campaigns and program to promote even peer role modeling um, so they can see from their peers uh, what uh, they can do as well and i can explain more later on what we uh, we do with uh, why not movement by girls in tech indonesia additional support and mentorship um, is about uh, giving mentoring community building and also advocacy so i'm gonna quickly uh, show you what i mean so at remote skills academy we created a live bootcamp self-led and mentoring and this is the the success story of Sapitri. So she she was a single mom, lost her job during the pandemic, and then know nothing about digital skills. And we give uh, her digital skills to to learn how to uh, work remotely. And she joined volunteering program with us, and then get remote clients uh, with the recommendation of uh, her peers in the community. Uh, we also running girls in tech scholarship which we give them uh, hard skills which is full stack development soft skills uh, like communication remote communication leadership and also internship for role model uh, we created a program that we called why not as an affirmation to break any doubts and boost self-confidence uh, we did monthly workshops. So this one is like building mobile apps, uh, coding with Python's, um, and we do female first meetups where uh, we do classes where you can do your hair, do your nails at the back, and uh, we have like uh, childcare. You know, so I just help women to be be able to attend the the class. We did hackathon where seventy percent um, of participants are female. We did mentoring nights where we invite female CEOs to share dinner with us, with, uh, with the mentees and pitching sessions um, from 53 business proposal. We have 10 finalists and three winners. Also, we have like WhatsApp groups. We have social media that also give a lot of awareness about uh, women in tech. So after... Um, after that why not program that we've done uh, 1500 uh, women have participated 
93% agree that to gain practical uh, that to gain practical knowledge and skill is needed by women. 78% agree that networking also needed, and 70% agree circles of support is crucial. You can make a difference as well. Uh, you can host events to inspire women. You can sponsor women's digital education. You can share your skills to women. You can mentor or coach women to thrive in their career. Uh, you can also hire women in any capacity, intern, part-time, freelance, or full-time. So with that, uh, I invite you to collaborate with us. Uh, just email me, leah at remoteskills.academy, or connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much.